guys welcome back and thank you so much for watching i hope you are all well and um, before we get going with the video if you can hear some clanking about outside it's just lots of building work going on in my street it's not drilling thankfully it's just scaffolding and sometimes it sounds like they're all having a nice sword fight with their pieces of scaffolding but hopefully it's not too distracting at all and um, i've just got back off holiday i think i'm looking a little bit brown if i do say so myself um, had the most amazing time, it's been so, so lovely. And when I was away, or whenever I'm away, or whenever it's hot, I tend to rely the most on really, really simple outfits and just laid back, easy, lazy looks. And because of that, it got me thinking quite a lot about accessorizing when I was away and the pieces that I would wear the most, and do wear the most year round, not just through summer, to help me elevate those really basic looks, which sometimes I just want to go back to day in, day out. Um, I did I, I did a what I wore on holiday video, but I didn't really touch on accessorising very much. So I thought we'd do a separate video. And while this has been inspired by the summer months, these are definitely all the accessories that I wear day in, day out, and throughout the year. So it's not just summer focused, even though it's been inspired by my recent summer holiday. Um, so yeah, I know you guys are often asking for a jewellery collection, and I promise that I will film that for you soon. But this video does include some jewellery, the pieces that I wear every single day I'm going to talk through, and also some new pieces from Fedoma, who have very, very, very kindly sponsored this video, and have even more kindly included a giveaway within this video too. So you guys can have all the pieces that I'm going to show you. The details for all of that and how to enter will be in the description box, and I'll put it right at the top so you don't have to read through it all. It's going to be right at the very top. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hatch, oh, there we go with the scaffolding. Um, so I'm going to have some pieces from their news collection to show you as well, alongside all of the other pieces that you see me wear so much too. So let, let's start with jewellery. I've got jewellery, some hair bits, a single belt, we can all guess which belt, some handbags, and just the pieces that I feel I just wear and love the most, basically. So jewellery, let's start with the pieces that I, no, let's, let's start from the head down, let's do this through body type. So I'm going to start with my ears first and I'm going to have to bring you guys in a little bit closer. Now, please do excuse how tired they look and I also have a cold sore on the side of my mouth. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I go on holiday and I like chill and my body slows down, it's when I'm like, haha, I'm going to catch up with you with some tiredness, some illness, a cold sore, all that usual good stuff. So please, let's just focus on my little elf ears instead of that. Um, for me, earrings are something that I've sort of gotten into probably over the past 18 months more than ever. And since then, I've had quite a few piercings as well. So I have um, gold hoops throughout my ears, which I really, really like. Um, they won't be forever. Like, I don't think I'm going to love this forever. I don't think it's particularly timeless style, having lots of gold hoops through your ear. But I, for now, absolutely love how it looks. So I have three plain gold ones in the top here, which definitely took the longest to heal. And then I have three gold ones through the bottom there and followed by this dangling chain with a floating diamond on the bottom. So this is the first brand that I'm going to mention, which is Roxanne First. And this is through the collaboration that Lindsay Holland, my best mate, um, did with them. So I, the necklace is also from there, but we'll talk about that in more detail later. Um, but it's just beautiful. She did loads of gorgeous fine chains with floating diamonds on them. So they had a bit of bling to them, but they weren't really like in your face bling. It was su super understated. Pieces you can wear every single day and I do wear both the pieces every single day and never ever ever take them off so yeah so in this um ear i have a total of five piercings actually also five in this ear i've got two two in both lobes um but yeah this these are the ones i wear every single day and then i mix up the others so i have some of what the others are here and let's start with some Fedoma because these are the pieces that you can have too. So, so for the bottom ones, it's almost always a gold hoop. I've got one style of earring here, which isn't a hoop. Um, but I almost always go for gold hoops. So sometimes I like to wear a big one and then a littler one in the second hole. Um, since I've been styling it this way, I haven't been doing that because the second hole's taken up by the drop diamond, which I personally really like. But it's quite nice to have a selection of different hoop sizes because... I don't know, it just looks sort of really effortless and it's really easy. So um, the first ones, and honestly gold hoops can be surprisingly difficult to find. These are from Fedoma, these ones. Um, just gold with a kind of texture running through them, which makes them feel quite vintage inspired, which I personally really, really like. It's also a really nice yellow gold. I always like yellow gold jewellery as opposed to rose gold jewellery. Um, and what's great about these, I'm just going to pop one in so that I can show you what I mean, is that the hoop... You can't see the gap at the back of the hoop, so it looks like a fully closed hoop without actually being, because sometimes if it's a fully closed hoop, 
and then the clasp is different, I find that you can lose them a lot easier than you can one with the butterfly end, which I have learned the hard way. Um, I do have a pair here which has been an exception to that rule for me, but I have lost so many earrings that close that way, um, partly due to my bad habit of fiddling with my earrings, but still. Uh, but you can see what I mean, it looks like a fully closed hoop, even though there is the gap at the back, um, and I think they're just such a good hoop size. I like the fact they've got a bit of texture on them, so if you've got lots of different earrings and like I have, it breaks it up a little bit. Um, they're not too big that you're going to catch them on things, but they're kind of big enough to feel like a little bit of something something. Um, these are the ones that I'm going to wear today, I think, so I'm going to take it out for now and then put it back in at the end. The other pair of earrings that I had from Fedoma are a little bit more evening inspired. Um, they're these gold ones with the little pearl in the middle, which I really like. I wore these on holiday more than I wore the plain ones, um, just because, like I was saying, for the most basic outfits, it's quite nice to then have a little bit of something something with your jewellery. Um, and with the pearl in the middle of these, Again, it feels quite vintage inspired, which I really, really like. So here we go with these. I think these look really nice. Again, um, the Roxanne First and Ropes of Holland earring behind it. Um, and I just like from a distance, and that has a bit more impact because of the pearl in the middle. I actually would wear these as an every single day piece as well. But I think if you're starting out a little jewellery collection, a gold hoop is the best place to start, definitely. And then build around that in terms of the size of hoops that you want to introduce as well um, and i'll link all of the fedoma earring sections so you the section on their website so that you can see all the different styles of earrings but also the different styles of hoops that they do but i think these are really really nice and like i said i've got a little bit more of pizzazz to them if you will the next ones i have uh, you guys have seen in a recent video as well they're by a brand called hernan henders and i wanted to include these because i've been wearing them a lot recently um, and they are not going to be everybody's taste because they look like they're coming out of the middle of your ear and lots of the pieces that this brand does are like that like slightly abstract in their design which I really like um, but I just think they're really cool and they're really easy to wear every day as well so um, yeah they're definitely not going to be everybody's taste because they are a bit weird but I personally really 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 like them and they're pretty comfortable too but um, it's a brand that I'm really enjoying their stuff at the moment so I wanted to include those ones in this too and now I'm going to put in the Fedoma the plain gold ones because these are the ones that I'm going to wear today there we are two gold hoops in I do really think it makes a big difference to how something looks with minimal effort involved which I always enjoy all of the Fedoma pieces as well including these earrings are gold plated on um, sterling silver they do have a fine jewellery section as well which I'll also leave a link for you guys in the description box so you can go and have a little gander of it all but yeah these are gold plated which is perfect because I also find them a lot more comfortable when something's gold plated or solid gold or anything like that I think that's probably pretty common as well and obviously ideal not for making your skin go discoloured in any way so there, get bonus points for that. Um, and now let's move down onto the chest. Um, so this necklace, which I already briefly mentioned, is also by Roxanne First in the Rotes of Holland collection. Um, I think you can definitely see that they're all part of the same collection with the fine chain and it's got three floating diamonds on it. I sleep in this, I shower in this, I go to the gym in this, I never, ever, 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 ever take this piece off. And then I have a rotation of other ones that I do take on and off. Um, and the most notable, notable brand for me is probably Peniel Croydon in terms of the gold chains that they do. This is a flat snake chain, which I wear relatively often. I also have a normal gold chain from them and they just have a huge, huge selection of different chains. Just moved you out a little bit so you can see, We're basically not just watch a cold sore be talking. Um, but yeah, this, this I wear a lot and I get lots of questions about this when I wear it. I'm not gonna wear this one today, which is why I'm not putting it on, but Pineal Croydon is definitely one that I would really recommend for lots of different gold chains. They have some really, really great ones and lots of really basic ones like this okay i also have another piece from fedoma here which is this beaded cream maybe more ivory colored um choker it is available on a tighter setting which i've just put it on the looser one for now just because i think it complements the length of this um my roxanne first one really well and i do think it's often really good to have a base of jewelry that you wear every single day which obviously i'm showing you what my pieces are now because then when you add other pieces you've sort of got something that is your benchmark as it were of how you want to add on to accessorizing so for necklaces you might think about the length of things and um, the color the thickness all different sorts of things
things but I think it makes you be a little bit more refined in your choices as well so I really 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 like the length of this and I think this would be a really good summer piece because it's a bit of fun and that's just me saying that because of how much I am into like gold simple jewellery so anything that isn't that I'm like this is a bit of fun when it's still really understated and really nice and um, I'm not going to wear this today though I'm going to wear another piece from their collection um, which you might have seen quite a bit on Instagram and I really 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 love it is this necklace with the little oh no I've got it all tangled it is this necklace with the gold jug on the end this is surprisingly blah, 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 blah. And it is this necklace with the gold jug on the end. Um, this is probably the, the piece in this video which I think is the most summery for me. Um, and I think this would look so nice on holiday with dresses and um, with just this necklace on to really add a little bit of something through the length of a slightly lower neckline. Um, but I really, 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 really like it. I used to be really into like the coin necklaces, which I don't wear as much anymore. But I do miss the combination of layering some chains with something that's a little bit longer with more of a pendant style on the end. Um, and this is so nice. I wish you guys could feel it because it's got such a weight to it. Like it just feels really luxurious and really expensive while being at a really, really good price point. Um, and yeah, like I said, I think it's just such a nice summery piece. And it's got the little pearl as a stopper on the, here we go with the drilling, a little pearl as a stopper on the jug, which is just a really nice detail too. So I'm gonna wear that today. I deliberately wore this top, which is from Arquette, by the way, because I thought it complemented that neckline really, really nicely. So yes, those are the Fedoma pieces I have to show you. And like I said, um, we're running a giveaway, all of the details of which can be found in the description box. The only thing you absolutely have to make sure you do is follow them on Instagram, which will also be linked in the description box. Um, but yes, I'm really excited to be working with them and excited to be working on a giveaway for you guys too. So I hope, hope you have enjoyed these jewels as much as I have. Um, and now let's just do another step down. Two hands. One thing notably missing is my watch. Every single day I wear um, my dad's old watch, which is a Tag Heuer Carrera. It's currently been serviced, which is something you are meant to do with watches. Um, obviously they're pieces that are meant to last a lifetime and be handed down through generations, which is what I intend to do with mine. And they go through quite a lot of wear and tear and they get filthy above all else, which is really gross, but they get especially linked watches get absolutely filthy being on your wrist every single day so you're meant to service them and it is a bit of a pain because it means you, it's off your wrist for a good six weeks most of the time and um, so i'm i've got another month without mine at the moment and i'm missing it dearly and some of you guys have been noticing i haven't been wearing it so that's where that is um and you you all know what it what it looks like i'm sure because of how often i wear it but yes hopefully that'll be back soon but for now let's focus on rings i have three on here this one is probably the one I get the most questions about because it's pretty noticeable. This is my Uncle Luigi's um, signet. It's his family crest and it is bloodstone. I've discovered that recently. Bloodstone set in gold. Um, obviously, I had to get it resized to fit my finger and I absolutely love it. I saw Luigi really recently when I was in Italy and he also wears a different ring with his crest on it. And I had had the crest facing me, so the crown was at the top of my knuckle, um, at the top of my finger. Um, and he was like, you've got that on the wrong way around. You meant to have the crown facing your hand so that it, you present it to people this way and they see it the right way. So I've turned that around and I'm now thrilled to wear it correctly. But I absolutely love this. I really like signet rings, but it's really nice to have something that's so personal within one as well because obviously there's a lot of surface area on a signet ring. So lots of opportunity to personalise it in any way you want it. Um, but yeah, to have this crest on it and in bloodstone, which is really special, is very amazing um, and also from Luigi is this ring that I wear in the middle this was um, a piece in his family for years one of um, a piece that his ancestors had and he gave it to me many many years ago and it had been worn so much that the band had worn down almost to nothing so I couldn't wear it because it would have just snapped completely so for my 25th birthday my mum had this rebanded for me and I've been wearing it ever since I absolutely love it I love how vintage it feels and um, I love the setting of it it's so different um, it's just absolutely beautiful and I love it and then on this finger this is a very recent piece which I've also spoken to you about um, which Ben um, gave to me which was gifted to him from a brand called Fenton & Co where you can design your own rings with them and it's all ethically sourced diamonds which is obviously hugely important um, and I went for this emerald style one which is also quite vintage so that it would match 
this one which is like i said is quite a vintage style so these are the three rings that i wear every single day i love them all so 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 much i love that they're not all of a particular style like they've all got their own thing going on they're all quite big i've got quite big hands and quite big fingers like big knuckles so big jewelry always looks better on me on my hands there's something dainty whereas the dainty jewelry i'd focus more on earrings or necklaces and something chunkier on my hands but um, yeah, I never ever ever take any of these off and I love wearing them every single day um, And I think it's really nice to have rings especially which are quite a statement that you wear every single day because people start to really recognize you for it Just through your mannerisms and the way you talk with your hands Like I have memories of people and the way that they speak and thinking about how their hands look when they speak of that So much of that is the rings that they have on So there's something hugely hugely personal about it Which I love and also love the fact that they're all quite sentimental pieces too. So that concludes jewellery. Let's stay to the top half of my body, seeing as that is where we are focused on with this camera angle. I thought I'd go through some sunglasses. Now I was thinking about like what my ultimate um, brand of sunglasses would be. It just has to be Ray-Ban. Sunglasses are getting more and more expensive. I was I bought this pair when I was um, going to Italy, so which uh, was Stansted Airport. Um, and I was looking at loads of other ones, and even in the airport, I was like, whoa, they're so expensive nowadays. Whereas Ray-Ban have always stayed in that like 100 to 200, more like the 150 point price point, which I personally am always prepared to buy some designer sunglasses with. But when they're going over like 300 pounds now, it's mental. So yeah, I just always seem to go back to Ray-Bans, and they're really flattering. And I love the way that they've recently expanded, well, not recently probably, but have now expanded the more classic styles into different frame sizes, so like the Wayfarer. These aren't called the Wayfarer, they're gonna be linked in the description box, but they're obviously very Wayfarer inspired, but they've got a little different dip through the top of the nose, which I really like. Um, wore these nearly every single day on holiday, they're so comfortable. I really like a classic, basic sunglass. And I have said before in a video that I've like dabbled with more statement sunglasses in the past, and I've always learned to regret it. So just like to focus on really simple, classic ones, that again, when you've got all your jewellery on, look far from simple. I love like having my hair up and you can see all the earrings and gold hoops with a really nice sunglasses without loads of branding down the side unless it's really subtly and chicly done. Um, and Ray-Ban are great at that, just minimal branding but still quite recognisable. So I thought I'd mention that. And then the second pair, which probably my all-time favourite pair of sunglasses are the Clubmaster ones. Again, it's a really similar style. It's just the style that suits my face. And these are the tall shell ones. They do them in black, which I really, really like. Um, but they're just great. They're, they're so comfy. They're, they're so easy to wear. They're so easy to style. They look good on everybody. They're just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant sunglasses. So I think Ray-Ban are just for a long time going to be my go-to. And they were my dad's go-to. And I'm sure so many people as well. Um, so that was sunglasses. And a quick hair accessory. This is a really recent obsession for me, as in an obsession that began on holiday but it is a hair clip um i got a really like tacky but i really liked it um one in Sheffalu for like three euros and in italian it's called un pincer we weren't learned um and then was wearing it non-stop and was ridiculously attached to this thing and then went and picked up a slightly more understated tortoiseshell one from the pharmacy in notting hill um and i've been using them to tie my hair up i'm really thoroughly enjoying it and my little tip has been to tie it up when your hair is damp, so wash your hair in the morning. Obviously, you couldn't sleep in this unless you wanted an almighty headache, so you've got to wash your hair in the morning. When it's damp, so, you know, let it air dry a little bit, then tie it up by doing the, the twist from, like, the nape of your neck. So, you know, I used to do this when I was little, it just reminds me of being younger. So, you twist all of your hair up like you were making a bun, and then just double it back over at the bottom. Get your pincer, pincer the hair to the back of your head, so it's in place. That's kind of difficult. If, depending on the thickness of your hair, you're gonna need a bigger pincer. Um, and then let your hair dry with it up like this and then take it down for the evening and you're gonna have really nice effortless curls. Sometimes I try and do that with a bun, but some, the bun's sometimes too tight to let your hair dry. So you drop it down and it's still a bit damp. And then if you've got straight hair like me naturally, by the time it's dried, it's just dried straight. But this has been working a treat for me. So it's like two hairstyles in one. And I also really like how it looks when you've got your pincer it. I keep calling it pincer, how you've got your hair clipping. Um, I think it's kind of like a bit of a mum sort of style, but in a really chic way. And I'm really, really into it. And the whole combination of having your gold earrings in, your pincer, your sunglasses on, 
just, it's just something I'm really, really, really into and I'm going for nearly every single day since the pencil love obsession began. Um, and Ben and I were saying we were just always gonna remember that that's a word for an Italian, so it's always gonna be called a pincer from now on, a pincer. But yeah, I'm really loving it. And I think I'm gonna treat myself to a black one, which um, I think Boots seems to be the place to go for them, just pharmacies generally. And they're like, this was four pounds, I think. So it's a really affordable accessory too, but I really, really like how it looks. And just watch this space, I think they're gonna be everywhere. We all saw the hair clips with like Gucci written all over them blow up. This could be the next big thing, although I, you can rest assured I'm not gonna branch into one that's got crystals on and says Gucci on it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep this in because this is how, this is the look that I wanna go for today, especially I'm really liking it with this necklace too. Um, let's move further down the waist and talk about belts. Uh, there's only one belt worth mentioning, which is my vintage Chanel one, and just generally a black belt with a gold buckle is an essential. This has a, like a snake skin embossing on it, which I wouldn't say is an essential detail, I had one from Topshop, which I had for probably about a year before this one, and literally wore it till it broke. Like, all of the leather around um, the fastenings just was completely cracked, was falling to bits completely. Uh, this one I have had for probably about nine months now, and it's holding up really well. You can see the point that I always fasten it on, but it's holding up really, really, really well. Um, so. I got this off Vestiaire, which actually everything I'm mentioning from here on in, I got off Vestiaire, and I would definitely recommend them to look for some vintage belts. You don't need a vintage Chanel one at all, but I have to say the quality of this one has been, um, scaffolding again, has been a lot better than the Topshop one that I had. But I think any leather belt, like you could even go to Marks and Spencers and just pick up a really great leather belt. But yeah, I, like I said, I got this off Vestiaire. And if you are looking for vintage ones, um, if you need to go for a size a lot bigger, cobblers can normally do a really good job of reducing the length of a belt. So if you see the perfect one, but it's not in a size that is your size, you can normally, at the very least, obviously get holes punched in, which cobblers normally just do for free and will do there and then too. Um, but they can also normally cut it shorter and then refasten the buckle on as well. So it's quite good if you are after something really specific, you are not completely at mercy to what sizes are available. Um, and um, I'm so sorry about this. It's literally all around the house, so there is nowhere that I can go where this sound isn't happening, which is frustrating, but hopefully not too distracting. And I thought I'd end on two handbags. Um, like I said, they're both in Vestiaire, so that might have given away which two they are, but uh, probably not surprisingly, this, probably not surprisingly, this Celine one, um, which again, like I said, I've got a Vestiaire. It is their hobo bag. Um, it's completely converted me back into big bags. I think I had a really small bag phase. But the, the thing about a, a big bag, which is a blessing and a curse, is that you get used to being able to take everything except the kitchen sink out with you. And then it's really hard to not want to take that all the time. So I'm like, a book, a jumper, seven outfits, a few mugs, whatever I see as I'm leaving, I'm like, I'm gonna take that with me because I can't. Um, but yeah, I have loved this bag. I, it's really converted me to a bag of this sort of a length of shoulder strap where it sits down the body here um, and just, it's so great and so practical and I absolutely love it and love the color of this one above all else. So it's been one that I've worn a lot through spring and summer, but we'll continue to enter winter because it will look great with like black wool coats and things. Um, but yeah, definitely a special mention to this one. And then my other vintage one, I mean, that Celine one's not vintage as such, it's just an old collection, whereas this is vintage, it's Dior one. Um, also a big enough size to be able to fit a lot in, obviously not quite as much as the Celine one, but still a decent amount. And again, it's that same length and shoulder strap, which I just really, really like. Was really into crossbody bags for a while, but definitely prefer something on the shoulder a bit more, more recently. Um, and it's just got the flat opening there, um, and it's so chic, so simple. This above or any other bag that I have, I get the most compliments on. So um, yeah, definitely a shout out to putting some little um, notifications up on Vestiaire for any brands or vintage things that you think are gonna pop up and keep an eye out. I think I, I didn't pay for either of these. I was given a voucher for both of them. So they were gifted, but they were both around the five or 600 pound mark, which I'm sure we can agree in the world of handbags nowadays, where they are all over a thousand pounds, pushing two grand um, is a really good price for a designer bag. And they were both in brand new condition too. So um, I think 
that's my cue to end this video. I really, really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope it's given you some inspiration. Like I have said, um, the information of the giveaway and more information about Fedoma will be in the description box. Huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, links to everything else will also be there. That is still available. I will link my watch there too, just in case you're interested, which is the watch that I normally wear if you've never really noticed it before. Um, and I promise a full jewelry collection video will be coming soon. So thank you so, so much as always. I'll see you in the next one.